It's been a while since I've made a barbarian, and I've been wanting to do something focused on just soaking up as much damage as possible for a while now. And yeah, barbarians are tanky, but the average barbarian is still going to run out of steam eventually without a healer. Plus, there isn't really incentive for taking a bunch of damage, unless you just like to be a big tank and take big hits like I do. So I want to really focus on the idea of taking damage, and as much as you can, using that pain to fuel your attacks and your rage at the same time. There are a lot of characters that just get stronger the angrier they are, like the Hulk and Broly, but there's one in particular that I want to focus on, since he's kind of the closest you can get to a playable barbarian, and that is Metal Bat, the S-ranked hero who, no matter how hard you knock him down, he always seems to get right back up and comes swinging at you even harder. So, let's see what we can put together on this episode of the Game Master's Domain, with the goal of actually wanting to be a damage sponge. As usual, you can get this pack on Patreon, just a few bucks a month gets you everything I've ever made, and if you like this stuff, why not subscribe to the channel, like the video, or, better yet, leave a comment. YouTube likes comments. Now let's actually get to work on making a damn near immortal barbarian. So what do I mean with this? Barbarians are going to take damage, everyone is, and being on the front lines, barbarians are going to take a lot of it. Well, like I've said in the past, most barbarians aren't great at being tanks. Yes, they can soak up damage if they have to, but that's not the only part about being a tank. You need to have some way to make sure that you are the focus of the enemies, and if you can, have some reward for actually doing your job as a tank and making sure that your party isn't taking the brunt of the damage. And since making abilities that give aggro in some way is actually pretty easy, I wanted to focus on the other part first, taking hits, and getting something out of it. Using the examples that I gave earlier with the Hulk and Broly, both of them get stronger the angrier they are. And you know, I have no idea how long it's been since the last time you were stabbed, but I can't imagine you'd be very happy afterwards. But with Metal Bat, it's a little different. He just keeps getting up. Every time someone thinks they finally knocked him out, he jumps back up and pummels them even harder. As long as this man has the will to fight and you don't flat out kill him with a sneak attack, he isn't going down without a fight. You can break his bones, bleed him out, and rupture his organs, but Metal Bat is going to keep swinging until one or both of you are dead. And that's what I want to fixate on. Every time he gets hit, Metal Bat gets stronger, until he eventually calms down and all the fatigue hits him at once. And no, I am not putting exhaustion levels in as like a punishment for using your main feature, because that's bad, and maybe one day I'll get to that. So what we need is some way to track the damage you take, and give you something in return. But calculating the amount of HP you're missing can be hard, and it'd just be a lot of extra book work, so I came up with something that is a hell of a lot simpler. And that is going to be your bottomless tenacity. The ability to take big hits, and then come back hitting even harder. You get this ability right when you take the subclass at 3rd level, and every time you take damage during a round, you get one stack of tenacity, up to 5 stacks. And each one makes you stronger. The first stack just gives you an extra 1d10 damage in all your attacks. The second stack gives you resistance to the last damage you took if you don't already have it like bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. The third time someone hits you, you get to make another attack as a bonus action, and you get a plus 2 to your AC with your fourth stack. And the last stack, if you can manage to get hit 5 times before your turn starts, ups your crit rate, so you can get those big crits even more often. But even though you're a barbarian, all that damage is still going to add up. So I've given you two ways to deal with that. The first one is just some temp HP. If you have 3 or more tenacity stacks at the end of your turn, you get 1d8 temp HP for each stack, so up to a max of 5d8. Or if you've taken a pretty bad beating and are down below half of your max HP, you can use a bonus action to heal 1d12 per stack that you have, but this does use up all your stacks, so you won't be able to use any of those tenacity buffs if you decide to use this instead. But uh, it's also a bonus action, so make your attacks first, then heal, so you still get the bonus. Yeah, I only really realized this loophole while I was recording this, so kinda too late to change it now, and I'm not gonna bother with it, so enjoy. 
Oh, but since this healing is pretty damn strong, you can only use it a few times up to your con modifier. Which, if you're building this type of character, constitution should be one of the things that you are focusing on. You can't really be a tank if the caster has more HP than you. So there you go, a reason to actually run in and get hit. And since that's your goal, you don't really need to worry about your deck stat. You want to be taking damage and getting hit, so that you can get those tenacity buffs. So really a lower AC is better for you here. Oh, and you do need to be raging to get any of these buffs, by the way. Um, I forgot to mention that earlier. So now that you actually have a benefit to being a tank, there's still the issue of monsters just ignoring you and going and targeting your friends instead. Another really good actual tank barbarian subclass is the Ancestral Barbarian, and they get over this hurdle by having your allies just take reduced damage if they're near you while you're raging. But these type of characters don't do that. They're angry and provocative, and they're going to taunt you to get your attention. So rolling with the idea of taunting and provoking, your next ability is called Provoke the Proud, letting you target a bunch of creatures up to your constitution modifier. You yell at them, challenge them, or something, and as long as they fail a wisdom saving throw that is based off your constitution modifier, they can't attack any creature that isn't you. So the more you invest in your HP, the more likely you are to be using it. Look, if you paid for the entire HP bar, you might as well use the whole thing. Now something I really like here is that Provoke the Proud isn't bound to your rage. You don't have to be frothing at the mouth to taunt someone into punching you in the face. And I'm sure lots of creative players could find really fun ways to use this outside of combat. It could also really easily be used to start a fight, a bar fight, or maybe you need a distraction in a crowd so your barbarian just punches someone in the face and then challenges everyone around him to a brawl. And meanwhile, the party is doing whatever their shenanigans are. So by this point, it's pretty clear that you're enjoying soaking up all this damage, but it can still add up even with the healing and temp HP from your tenacity. And you could pretty easily find yourself a lot lower on HP than you'd like. So with all this damage and goading enemies into attacking just you, you have definitely become somewhat of a combat masochist. Yes, the attacks still hurt, but that's part of the fun. The aching of your muscles, the pounding of your heartbeat in your ear, those keep pushing you forward to keep fighting. And because of that, you can take big hits that would normally knock you or anyone smaller than you on their ass. And when you would otherwise be dropped to zero and knocked unconscious, you can keep going, staying at 1 HP. This also gets you in the mood to fight all the goddamn time, meaning you are always going to have at least one stack of tenacity, so you're always going to be getting that 1d10 extra damage on your attacks. It also makes it that much easier to actually get your full stacks without having to get hit five different times. So originally I wanted to use a lot of Dragon Ball Super footage here, specifically Ultra Ego Vegeta, but since that's not really in the anime yet as far as I'm aware, I can't do that. But I still wanted to make something inspired by it, and oddly enough also inspired by a really bad Pokemon move. With these types of characters, or others that can absorb energy, it's pretty normal to have a retaliation attack, taking all the power of the attacks meant for you and sending that damage back at the attacker, or someone else. I messed around with a few different ideas on how I could make this work with tenacity, but I ended up just not having tenacity be a part of this feature, and that kind of helped it be closer to what I first envisioned. In a fight, you are no doubt taking the brunt of the damage now, effectively taunting everyone into using your face for target practice. But don't worry, once you hit level 14, you can make sure all the damage they dealt to you is paid back in blood. Since with one hit, you could technically deal, well, a few hundred damage? Okay, okay, I, kn I know that sounds bad, trust me, I know, but hear me out. First off, you need to hit your attack. Not hard, but the big damage numbers come from your missing HP. Since for every point of your max HP that you're missing, you deal one extra point of damage on your attack. So the larger your HP pool, and the more of that pool you're missing, the harder this one attack is going to hit, especially if you're all the way down at one HP. Now the big question is, how much HP can you have without a bunch of outside help as a Barbarian, the class with the largest hit die? 
Let's take a few things into account before we get to the math of this and see just how much damage we could potentially do. So we're going to assume a few things for this, and the first of those is that you are a level 20 Hill Dwarf, so that's an extra 20 HP right off the bat since they get 1 HP per level. And being level 20 Barbarian gives you Primal Champion, which if your con is already at 20, which it should be, gives you a constitution score of 24, which gives you a plus 7 to your HP for every level without doing anything. That is 140 HP just from your constitution modifier. We're also going to assume that you have the Tough Feet, which gives you an extra 40 HP, equaling 200 hit points before you roll any dice or apply any magic items. Now, there aren't actually a lot of magical items that can help you pass this point. Your constitution score is already at 24, which is the highest any item sets it to, being the Iron Stone. And everything else just gives you temp HP, which doesn't help. And nothing else really boosts your con score. Unless you happen to find a Manual of Bodily Health, which increases your con score by 2 without any limit. And since we're going all in here, no breaks, let's get the most out of this book. Dwarves can live up to 350 years. So let's say you get this build online just before or around the time you hit age 50. And the steroids book regains its magic every 100 years. That means you could increase your con score by a total of 6, reaching the constitution score of 30. This gives you a plus 10, giving you 260 hit points without ever rolling your hit die even once. That is more than most casters will ever get, and there's still more to go. Your first level is always max, so that's 12, and from here we'll be taking the average of a d12, which is going to end up being 7, leaving you with a total of 405 hit points. But why stop there? Let's assume that you rolled the maximum roll, a 12, for every level. That would give you the maximum HP of 500. And if you want to scrap the dwarf part and go with, like, an elf, you can read that book every 100 years for a total of 620 HP. But for the damage calculation, I'm just going to stick with the dwarf. So with a regular plus 3 great axe and a strength of 24 from Primal Champion, your first attack would be dealing 1d12 plus 10, plus 4 from Rage, and another 1d10 from your first stack of Tenacity. And then, if you manage to get all the way down to a single hit point, you could be dealing between 500 and 540 damage with Paid in Blood. Yeah, have fun turning pretty much anything in your path into fucking Salsa. Yeah, that... That might be some of the highest damage I've done, at least to a single target. Um, I'll have to go back and double check what the Oath of Power says it does, but j just give me a sec. Oh yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> the Oath of Power got 216 damage to a single target in one round, and this gets, um, you know, 500 to 540 on one hit. So, yeah. Now, thankfully, that's not ever going to actually happen, you're never going to roll max hit die on all of your dice, and you're never going to roll maximum damage and just get that much health. Even if you somehow manage to actually get around that amount of hit points, you'd be a shriveled old man by the time you got there, because you're either an elf at the end of their lifespan, or a dwarf at the end of theirs. I also might have missed a few magic items or other things that, that aren't spells that could have helped you, but as far as I could find, the Manual of Bodily Health was the only thing that took your constitution past 24. But, uh, if I missed anything, go ahead and tell me in the comments, and we can make this number go even higher. But I think that's going to do it for today. Um, as always, thank you for stopping by, and thank you to my patrons. I'll see you guys next time, and as usual, have a wonderful day.